In today's video, I paint apples, glue wheels, mix disgusting mud and melt down copper wire. Hello fellow modelers! I spontaneously bought this lovely Ford Maltier made by Polish company IBG. This version with a flag 38 is awesome and it is probably one of the most detailed kit in the small 72 scale. The kit contains a surprising amount of parts, including engine, detailed chassis or interior. And besides, in the kit are two photo sheets with extra details. The most of them are for the AA gun. So that was the kit, now let's build it. The parts are molded from a relatively soft plastic, so it's easy to separate them. Only the mold runner is near to the parts, so handy is for this purpose sharp side cutter. Some parts are also here a little bit simplified, but nothing substantial. And as usual you must spend some time cleaning seam lines or mold lines. You can use an ordinary nail file, hobby blade or metal file. The ejector pin marks are on clever, hardly visible areas, or mostly from the bottom side of the model. However, if you want to make the model properly, I recommend filling them with a party. I decided to open engine hood, therefore it's essential to create some minor modifications. First I need to thin down plastic parts. I use for this purpose microelectric grinder, but also suitable is to use metal files, only it will take more time. I am cutting holes to the front grill. I tried this once with a 24 scale model, so in 72 scale I am assume it will be similar, only smaller. I was not sure about this step at all, because I could easily ruin the whole kit, but I wanted to try it. And two more grills on the hood. You can use extra thin glue for melting plastic dust, but the parts are thin, so probably better is to use sandpaper. In the kit is of course included gear lever, but plastic is again relatively thick, thus you can make a better one from copper wire. If you heat the end of the wire with lighter, the wire will melt and this way you make the nice gear lever round ball. My friend from a local modeling club recommended me this photo edge steering wheel set, and I must admire, it looks much better. It was only a small bonus, but the rest of the metal parts are included in the kit, so we don't need to buy them separately. The whole kit is lovely detailed, but very fragile. For example, the wheels are attached only on very thin plastic pin, so it could be quite tricky. And instead of glue for plastic, you can use super glue, because it will not weaken the joint. And because it is so fragile model, it is hard to set a correct geometry. I think the tracks will fix the position, but also, it is not the easiest kit and you must bear it in mind. You actually do not need to drill out front light, because Germans mostly had the caps for reducing light intensity at night. The holder for blackout light looks a little bit monolithic, so I'm using residual metal strip from photo edge bars. It has the right size. I made this bending tool from old metal ruler recently, because it is handy for more complex shapes. You ask me in the comment section what is the purpose of the notches. You can use them for example for this box.
If you do not have a micro drill bits, you can simply buy hypodermic needles. They are cheap and very sharp, so you can use them like a drill. I think the IBG made with the Flag 38 excellent job. These details only in ordinary kit are fantastic. I recast plastic canisters and make new ones from resin, because the resin is better for drilling and modifications. Now it's easy to drill out holes and make the holders more realistic. I think next time I will recast even front grill and hood. I made another simple modification with a car wheel disc. The plastic is again fake, so I only remove the top layer with a grinder. I also drill out a few holes according to amusing vehicles. The large ones are for cables. Also, if you will decide to open engine hood, it is appropriate to create internal construction. It is relatively simple. You will need only plastic fibers, which you can stretch from residual plastic sprue. So, it's time for painting. But first, I'm unifying the surface of a primer. The color will adhere better to the plastic, but primarily on the metal parts. Also, it will reveal some imperfections. I completely overlooked this large mold line on the hood. That is the reason why I like primer. I use for spraying lacquer acrylic colors like Tamiya, Mr. Color or AK Real Colors. You can mix them, so you'll need the whole range of the shades. I don't want to follow the instruction manual properly, thus I'm painting flag with a German grey. It will be nice color contrast and the model will be less uniform. I use for small details like wheels, engine or exhaust pipes water-based acrylic colors. This type is not suitable for airbrush, but perfect for hand painting. A lot of kit manufacturers do not include details like engine into the kit, and you mostly need to buy them separately or make a new one from scratch. So it was a pleasant surprise. I decided to paint tracks with a light rust shade because I will add mud and lighter shades afterward. The tracks are also from a lot of parts, but they fit nicely, so it was not so difficult to assemble. If you have some terrible experiences with the Revel Panzer tracks, then this one was easier. And one more thing, I already paint them, thus I must use super glue for gluing. However, even with tracks is the whole chassis very fragile, so we must be cautious. Now I'm spraying highlights. It means you paint only raised or exposed areas. You will make the model optically less uniform this way. The good practice is to set a low pressure, 15 psi and highly diluted color. You will preserve color splattering and the transition will be smoother. I found only a few historical pictures of a Maultier, like this one. 
I decided to paint camouflage according to this picture, which has a classic free color marking. Painting smooth camouflage in these scales is sometimes tricky, so you need to spend some time with testing correct dilution on the old plastic model or board. I cannot tell you the precise dilution because each color is different. If you add a lot of thinner, then you can easily make ugly stains. And if color is too dense, then the transition will be with a lot of ugly spatters. You mostly do not need such a correct setting in larger 35 scale, so it's probably easier. And when the work is done, I fix paint job with a clear varnish. I fix the hood meanwhile painting with a cell adhesive poster gum. The kit has only a few decals, and you can protect them with a one layer of a clear varnish. I tested a lot of different types of washes, but probably the best is simple homemade mix of oil paint and enamel or odorless thinner. As you can see, it is straightforward basic painting or even weathering technique, with dark liquid made details more pronounced. Then you can use the same oil paint but without dilution for imitating wood texture. I painted base layer with a light wood shade, because it is easier to change shade to darker than the opposite. And with oil paint you can also imitate dirt or other materials. And you can wipe out excess wash with an enamel thinner. I want to paint more shading with oil paints on the rest of the model. But therefore, I need to spray on the model semi-gloss or matte varnish. The oil paint will adhere to the surface better than on the smooth clear varnish. Now it's proper time to add some necessary wires to the engine section, like spark plug, front light wires or battery cables. I use for this purpose primarily lead wires, because the material is nicely soft and flexible. Thus, you can easily shape them. The lead is a little bit toxic, so do not forget to wash your hand after work or wear gloves. And you can buy these lead wires probably in every fishing supply store. Such a simple modification, and now the whole engine looks more authentic. If you remember, I drill out front lights, but in the kit are not clear parts with a light cover. Luckily, the clear plastic sprue which is in the kit has the exact same diameter, so you can turn a new one from the sprue. I'm mixing mud from dry pigment, old dry roots and odorless thinner. This consistency is quite disgusting, but when it dry it'll be okay and probably less pronounced. As you can see, the model still looks very uniform, so let's make more weathering. Very nice is to paint a lot of scratches. You can paint them with a paintbrush or use a sponge. And I use Vallejo or Rebel acrylic colors. The dry pigment, which I used for mud, is quite messy, therefore I attach this wooden pillar on the chassis. Now is the model better for handling, and I do not need to worry about fragile details. In the kit are included small bottles, so I use them for accessories. I have a different resin details from old models, but also you can buy them separately. 
for example this box with apples is from Black Dog accessory set. I sprayed green and brown stains a little bit lighter, but it's not a problem again, because I can make them more browns with oil paint. Now it looks more interesting, the drying time of oil paint is usually 2 days and a thin layer. But if you do not want to wait, you can fix them with a varnish after 2 hours. The amount of oil paint on the surface is approaching to zero, so you can use lacquer or acrylic types of varnish. I am making a backside mirror from Selvisive Chrome wallpaper. So the model is almost finished, there will be only a few more steps and layers. I use for dust and stains ordinary enamel color. You can buy some expensive weathering products, but usually it is only diluted color. Therefore I am spraying accumulated dust around chassis with enamel brown color. The advantage of enamel color is that you can spray it with an airbrush, and then wipe it with a paintbrush like oil paint. This way you can paint nice dust, stains or leaks. Another cool technique is splattering. You can use acrylic color, but you cannot wipe dots from places where you do not want them. So therefore I recommend enamel or oil paint for this. Use simply highly dilute color and moisten brush with it. Then with a toothpick or sharp tweezers run over the brush fibers and color will spray on the model. I do not like spatters on doors, so I can easily wipe them off with a thinner. And if you want to make the model even less uniform, you can mix dark brown shade and repeat the whole process. The model is almost finished, I only had few more details. Funny fact is that German army had a US Ford truck, actually it was not made in USA but in Germany. Ford had factory in Germany before World War II and also owned 80% of Opel. The factory was confiscated in 1939 and renamed to Ford Werke, therefore Ford in German army. The last thing what is missing is door windows. You can actually skip this step because the windows can be fully rolled down. But in my opinion it looks sadly empty, so I make them only partly rolled down. I use a clear plastic board. I have this one from a headphones cover. So that is all. It is probably the smallest and the most detailed model which I ever made. Funny is to compare it for example with a lighter or my recent US tank transporter. I really enjoyed this new IBG kit and I'm looking forward to some others. So thank you for watching and see you next time.